Hi everybody, it's Stephanie here. Today I will be making an Infinity Gauntlet cake from the movie The Avengers Infinity War. The movie doesn't actually come out for three more weeks, but my kids and I are super, super excited, so we already got our tickets. For inspiration, I'm going to be using this Thanos toy with a little Infinity Gauntlet on it right here, and also a printout from the internet, which is all I could find. All right guys, let's get started. I've already baked two nine inch round cakes and five eight inch round cakes. I'm cutting them in half horizontally and filling them with buttercream frosting. I've pre-cut plastic straws to the same height of the cake and I'm inserting them into the cake for support. I'm placing a circular piece of foam core on top of the straws. You'll want the foam core to be a little smaller than the cake. I continue layering up the cake and buttercream and then I insert more straws for support and another round piece of foam core. If you don't add supports to the cake, it will collapse or fall over. You do not want that to happen. I add the final layers of cake and buttercream. For me, carving the cake is one of the hardest parts. It's pretty difficult to visualize, so I just cut away a little at a time. Be sure to keep your inspiration close by so you can keep referring to it. It kind of goes inward around the wrist, so I'm cutting away more cake in that area. I'm also cutting away more cake near the bottom. I'm giving it a layer of buttercream frosting on the outside of the cake. After it was covered, I wanted to make sure I had the right shape, so I decided to create the thumb so I could better visualize it. The thumb is made out of rice cereal treats. I'm molding the treats into the thumb shape. I insert a lollipop stick and then stick it into the cake. After I had the thumb into place, I felt like I cut away too much cake, so I decided to add it back with cake pop filling. A quick and easy fix. A really important step in making the cake is the center dowel. Take a sharpened dowel and push it through the cake while also twisting to get it through all the boards. Use another dowel to help push it all the way through the cake drum. On to my favorite part, the decorating. I've colored my fondant a shade of brown so that it will be easier to achieve the gold outer color when I airbrush it later on. The bottom of the gauntlet has a trim, so I've rolled out a piece of fondant and I cut it with a strip cutter. I roll up the strip and then I unroll it onto the bottom of the cake. To cover the cake, I'm using panels of fondant. I roll out a piece of fondant to about a quarter of an inch thickness and I place it onto the cake. I repeat the process on the back of the cake and I smooth it out with my fondant smoothers. On the back of the gauntlet, there are lines. So while the fondant is still soft, I'm drawing the lines with the help of a paper template and a modeling tool. The front of the gauntlet has a decorative piece. So I've printed out a paper template to help me get the perfect shape. I trim away the outer edge of the template to reveal the next layer of decoration and I trace it onto the fondant. The intricate details are a little harder to achieve, so I'm simplifying it to make it a little bit easier. I use a strip cutter to make thin lines of fondant and I cut small pieces of fondant to mimic the design. I move the pieces over onto my fondant and then I attach them with edible glue. I attach the entire piece to the cake. There are still more pieces that need to be cut out that will go around the wrist. I'm using paper templates to help cut these out. You'll need two of each. Using a modeling tool, I etch the design onto the fondant doing the best I can to match the real thing. And then I attach the pieces to the cake with edible glue. Okay, moving up to the thumb, I need to cover this area around the thumb with fondant. Just wrap it around and smooth it out with your hands and then cut away any excess fondant. Earlier, when I made the decorative pieces for the front, I also made two for the sides. They are pretty much the same, but smaller and less intricate. And I'm attaching those to the cake. For the top of the gauntlet, I first need to cut out panels of fondant for the front and the back. I created a paper template and I cut around it with my X-Acto knife. I attached both the front and the back panels to the cake, and I gave it some detailing around the edges and also on the back. Moving on to the fingers. I first create the fingers by molding them out of rice cereal treats with my hands. The next step is covering them in modeling chocolate, which will help to make them more smooth. I put them on a lollipop stick, and then I covered them in more layers of fondant. I then push the fingers into the cake. I can't forget about the thumb. I repeated the same process of covering it in modeling chocolate, and then a layer of fondant. I then cut away the excess with my scissors. The gauntlet has a beautiful decoration around the center stone. To make it, I printed out another paper template and used it as a guide for cutting. It's pretty easy when you have a template. And then I gave it some detailing with my modeling tool. 
I trim the template to reveal the next layer, and then I repeat the same process. There is a decorative edge around this stone, so to create it, I'm using a clay extruder to make a rope, and then I'm twisting it. I attach the rope around the edge, and I also create a small log of fondant and attach it inside the rope. I then attach the decoration to the cake with edible glue. On the thumb of the gauntlet, there is another decoration. This one is pretty easy as it's just ovals. To create this, I've rolled out a piece of fondant, I'm covering it in plastic wrap so that it will have a softer edge, and then I use an oval cutter to cut it out. I continue making two more smaller ovals, and then I attach them to the cake. Be sure to make an indention for the green gem. We have one more fondant decoration, and that is the trim around each gem. I've again made a paper template, and I'm tracing around it to mark where I want the trim to be placed. I use my extruder to create a log of fondant, and I attach it to the cake and trim it as needed. It's time for the airbrushing. I'm using my airbrush made specifically for cake decorating, which I filled with Americolor Gold Airbrush Color. I spray the color onto the cake. Next up are the gems. To make these, I first have to make a mold. I'm using a mold making kit where you have to mix the white and purple putties. I roll it into a ball and I flatten it out with my hands. I'm taking three gems I got from the craft store and I'm pressing them into the mold. I should not have pressed them so far into the mold. You really want it to be flat on the surface. For the gems, I'm using a product called Isomont Nibs by Cake Play. You just microwave them until completely liquefied, color it, and then pour it into the mold. They turned out pretty good. I think I'll need to experiment with other mold kits to get them perfect. Let's put it all together. I'm attaching the gems with a little brush of edible glue. All finished. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about making your own infinity gauntlet cake. Don't forget, if you're on social media, please go look for me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, if you have any ideas or suggestions for me, please let me know down in the comment section below. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.